Well, it was the Battle of the Border City last night for high school football. Of course, Armstrong Field, the venue for the second round. Yeah, you had Lloyd Comp taking on Holy Rosary. Now the game didn't really mean anything in the standings, but a whole lot of pride was on the line. We'll pick it up in the second quarter. Raiders up 10-0. Carl Teledetsky from inside his own 15. Fakes the handoff, sees daylight, and he is gone. Taking it 97 yards to the house, 17-0 for the silver and black. Now this contest was physical. Barron's Dana Jackson just laying the shoulder. And how about Caden Kindop? Throws down Matt Holman. Same drive, Ryder, or Raiders would get the last laugh. The handoff to Andrew Kalfas. Sheds a couple tackles and runs in for the major. 24 zip for Holy. Now less than a minute to go in the half. Barron's driving. Braden Tangent with the rainbow to Denton Collins. It's a 49 yard catch and run. Barron's down 24 to seven. Now more from the Raiders in the third. Teledetsky will stay in the pocket. Takes a licking, but not before he airs it out to Donovan Granham for another touchdown. It's 31 to 16. Granham also doing it on special teams. Kelton Bossert with a couple of moves, finds a seam, and then he'll decide to pitch it. Bad move. That results in a Raiders recovery. Now 33 would do the rest. Kalfas with his third TD of the contest. Raiders sweep the season series. 39-16, and Kalfas giving props to his offensive line. I owe those guys so much. It's just, I would never be here talking to this camera if they weren't in the groove tonight. If anything, they should be the ones interviewed instead of me because they did all the hard work and I just carried the ball. He's a different style kid. He puts his head down and, and charges hard yards. Uh, he doesn't have the same uh, finesse uh, as Donovan. That's not a shot against uh, Kalfas. He's just a different style of runner. But uh, he pounds, he pounds the ground, gets first downs, chews clock. He's he's an ideal back. Boys had chances to make plays, and we were just a step late here. Um, and then there was the moments where it was like, where did that play come from? Where where was that aggression or that catch or that mental focus for the entire football game? Because yeah, there was moments where they were great, and then we have that lull like coming off their goal line, and their guy breaks the long run, and it just deflates things so fast. All right, the Lloyd Mr. Bobcats have started the month of October losing two of three and have once again found themselves running into penalty troubles. Well, tonight the Cats will have to clean up their play as they host the defending RBC Cup champions, the Brooks Bandits. Matt Schumont has more on tonight's tilt. After winning five of seven to close out the month of September, the Bobcats have dropped two of their last three games, seeing as a bit of a reality check as they might have been going into games with too much confidence. I think we got a little bit too complacent. I think we were... Uh... We were feeling a little bit too high on ourselves, a little bit too comfortable with our uh, with our success, which was great. But um, you know, we had we have to keep going. You know what I mean? We're not a team that can sit back and be fancy and take it easy in practice and stuff like that. People aren't taking us for granted. Obviously, uh, we earned some respect early in the in the year, and we're getting team's best effort right out of the gates. Exactly what we want. Uh, we need to improve with the puck on our sticks. So. Uh, we got to limit turnovers and not make the game so easy on our opponent. Another reason for the recent drought is the fact the Bobcats have once again been taking too many penalties, allowing five power play goals in their last two games. The team says with their undisciplined and untimely trips to the box, there will now be consequences. We talked as a team, and you know we're going to do some uh, some things in the room. You know what I mean? If you take a dumb penalty, then you're going to have to you're going to have to face some consequences. You know what I mean? Whether it be you know, stay a little bit later after practice or do some of the do some of the jobs around the rink or in the room or stuff like that. I think it's more just less timely penalties. I mean, when we have the momentum and then we go down one or two, it's really killing our confidence and it's just something that's we gotta get rid of. Up next for the Bobcats is a meeting with the defending AGHL and RBC champion Brooks Bandits. The Bandits have been in cruise control as of late, winning eight in a row, only allowing nine goals in that stretch. They got a lot of swagger, a lot of confidence. Um, yeah, they do have bad habits as well. Uh, you know, we, we found some areas uh, that I won't mention specifically, but uh, that we feel like we can target, and uh, we're very confident and excited to play. We're definitely going to have to be a lot better with the puck. I mean, turnovers and whatnot. They're a team with a lot of skill, so if we give them too many turnovers at our blue lines, then they're going to capitalize. So definitely with the puck is something we have to be better with. Puck drop for tonight's game is at 7.30. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports.
All right, well, last night, the Bonneville Pontiacs ended their six-game losing skid, beating Canmore 2-1. Ryan Black with a pair for Bonneville. The Pontiacs will continue their four-game in five-night road swing tomorrow night against the Calgary Mustangs. Now in Junior B action, a perfect battle here of two teams undefeated. They'll square off at Cold Lake as the Bandits visit the ice, while two teams with identical records go head-to-head -head in Saddle Lake as the Warriors host Vermillion.